Hello, everybody. This podcast is Lava. My name is James Fun. With me, as always, Silas Whitlock and the beautiful, in a yellow sweater, Sam Shoemaker. Why'd you say Silas' name first? Hmm? Hmm? Picking favorites already? I see. Well, he did call you beautiful. That's which you and I both know. Out of the two of us, I deserve that title. That's true. That's true. Oh gosh, no, you're not supposed to agree. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, you just Silas have to is say self conceited. Yeah, you just Maybe. gotta say my name first, and then you can call Silas beautiful, and then you'd have it right. Today's topics are uh, a very political thing because why not? And then the other thing is uh, art, which yeah. is very a political thing. It's also a very political. Well, thing. yeah, no, actually, yeah, it, it, it kind of it is uh, technically speaking. This podcast episode is going to be pretty political no just because what, like, of the art that in, we're talking about yeah in the artists that we're talking about specifically which if you he might be very <laughs> famous we don't know maybe, um, maybe yeah we don't know maybe, maybe you read the title ears. of this uh podcast before you listen to it and then you'd already know what we're talking about and if you did read the title you ruined it we were going to surprise you yeah we were going to surprise you but i don't know where I you're had at, but i'm put putting my fingers at you to shame you that's right it's bob ross yeah bob, <laughs> <laughs> bob that's he didn't die he's just he lives on in all of our hearts. That's right. In our he happy is. trees. No, 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 no. See, here's what it is. He got sick and tired. He got fed up with his show. He got fed up with being the nice guy. So you know what happy he became? Trees. He became the subject of this show, Banksy. That's right. Oh, that's a great conspiracy theory. That is yep. a totally true. It's same with Elvis. Elvis is actually a Skrillex. Yeah, <gasps> that's also true. No, I'm just Actually, Elvis is actually um, one of the... Uh, and JFK became Michael Jackson? Yes. <laughs> and no, think about it. Michael Jackson, born same exact day JFK died. Don't test me on it. I'm not sure. Might be true, might not be. Could be. Both guys were white. Who knows? He could have turned black <laughs> and then decided he wanted to be white again. <laughs> I've never seen JFK dance, but I'm just saying. he prob- Hey, like, did anyone ever see... <laughs> Michael Jackson and JFK in the same room? No. Oh, I, I didn't. Never. Anyways, so our uh, so yeah, the topic is Banksy, and then the first political thing we had it was something I found on Facebook today. So it probably tells you what comes up in my feed. So this happened today, or it was published today on the Washington Times. CNN analyst tells Black Sirius XM radio host David Webb to check his white privilege. I love this. Oh, it's so, so much. fantastic. So I skimmed the article. I'll link it in the description so you can read it for yourself. But basically, they were talking about African Americans in entertainment and journalism. Martin was debating on air, Sirius XM radio host David Webb said, I've never considered my color the issue, Webb told Martin. I considered my qualifications the issue. With that, Martin called out Webb for his white privilege. Well, David, you know that's a whole nother long conversation about white privilege and things that you have privilege of doing that other people don't have the privilege of, Martin told Webb. Webb then inquired, How do I have the privilege of white privilege? <laughs> Seemingly a bit annoyed, Martin replied, David, by virtue of being a white male, you have the white privilege. Before saying it would be, quote, a whole long conversation I don't have time to get into, end quote. Sadly, we couldn't catch the expression on Martin's face when Webb gave her the bad news. Quote, I hate to break it to you, but you should have been better prepped. The host began, I'm black. Um, there were a few seconds of silence before Martin said, seemingly without much embarrassment, okay then, I stand corrected. Webb then went to town calling Martin's assumption insulting. Quote, see, you went to white privilege, he told Martin. This is the falsehood in this. You went immediately with an assumption your people obviously or you didn't look. You're talking to a black man. Uh, Martin apologized, saying she was given wrong information, but Webb forged ahead, saying, My family background is white, black, Indian, Arawak, Irish, Scottish. It's so diverse. I'm like the UN. <laughs> this is, I love that. This is part of the problem with driving the narrative around a construct like white privilege. And then they have a link to the audio for this. And when I was researching this, I was looking to see if they had maybe – a YouTube video or anything like that, but unfortunately I couldn't find any other links outside of that one. At least when I looked. I don't know if you found anything, but I was trying well, it's to... just here on the blaze. Right. I just want to corroborate corroborate that with maybe some other I don't know. I'd it love is, to hear it, the... it is the Washi- it is in the Washington Times and the Wi the Daily Wire, a few other news okay. sources. I'll link a couple down. And I don't keep track of which ones of those are like considered left or right leaning. 
The Blaze so, for sure. I know is 100% the, the Blaze right is leaning, the, and yeah. and the Daily Wire is. I assuming the Washington Times. I don't know. Much. I think I've never I heard think of the, the Wire. Is, As you can tell, we're all very into news. This was just something that tickled tickled my funny bone. Yeah, and I agree. That's just kind of one of those. Without even getting into the politics of it, it's just a really kind of unfortunately embarrassing moment where they did not prep for what they were talking like they didn't give her anything about who she's talking to and it just kind of shows you what what stance they have when it comes to this they're always in the defense of like well like it's like the defensive aggressive kind of approach yeah where it's like automatically if you don't if you say something that i don't necessarily agree with you are automatically if i haven't seen you you're automatically a white male Yep, or something like that. Yeah, they they and so they automatically they just attack that, which is like just hilarious to me. Well, I think the problem is is her, and I think this happens on both sides, unfortunately. But there's this assumption that if you have X stance, you are X. You have a right leaning viewpoint. Well, then you must be a white male. And if you believe in like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like an opposing version. Um, and for if you the, have a left winging stance, winging, wing if it. you're left leaning, then you're probably. I mean, I do like buffalo wild wings. They are really good, especially the left wings off of the buffaloes. I mean, you specifically can tell because they have okay, a little real L quick, on them. I think I just made an oopsie. Is buffalo like the plural of buffalo? Buffalo. Yes. I think there's buffaloes. Is there? I'm pretty sure it's buffaloes. I'm pretty sure it's a herd of buffalo or flock. We're not gonna figure Maybe this out. Maybe a gathering. <laughs> I, you know what? Let me a just union? go off on a small tangent a and then union. come right back. I enjoy when there's really weird words that reference a herd or a flock of different animals. Yeah, like because a, each one has like you know a school of fish or a, a pack of wolves, but then there's really weird ones. The Congress of monkeys. Yeah, a Congress of monkeys. A pod of dolphins. A Congress of monkeys that tends to be in Washington D.C. How convenient! Oh no! Did oh I no! Make, did I make a political thing? No, you're just talking about the zoo there. What's oh. wrong with you? Oh, that's right, Washington Zoo. Yeah. So that was that was just an article that I thought needed a small, you know, our thirty five people who watch the, listen to this podcast. Thank you. And you're welcome. There was not you ten in Germany listeners. though. Oh. There were ten listeners in Germany though, right? There I were. Was... I think we had six six listeners in Germany or six that's, downloads. That's great. So, anyways, my cousin Rebecca told me to look up and do a podcast about Banksy, and I I had heard about Banksy because he did that stunt, girl with balloon shredding. Yeah, it, and it was a, it was all over the news, and that's the only reason it came to me because it's in Bristol, Britain. Yeah, and so I I mean a lot of people knew about him over here, but he's more well known in Britain. Yeah, exactly. and I think that's where his career started. Yeah, it's back in the nineties, nineteen ninety three. That's something I did do research on. Yeah, he, okay. his artwork started showing up all across Bristol, um, at least according to the articles I found in nineteen ninety three. That's when he really started to get recognized. And yeah, he does a lot of really, I mean, really pretty work. Like, it's really cool, the stuff that he does. Yeah, and it's very simple. It's usually like a kind of a silhouette piece with maybe a a splash of color. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, uh, and a splash of like... uh, Social political commentary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys hear about back in 2004, he printed a bunch of spoof $10 notes or 10 pound notes? No, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, but his banks, and it says, uh, the Queen of England was replaced by Princess Diana's face, and instead of Bank of England, the note read Banksy of England. That's amazing. But his whoever represents him legally denies all claims of that because it's that's illegal to have. All, most of the artwork that he does is illegal. Yeah. That's a great thing. I just want to say, and this is something that I like, uh, maybe I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Never mind. I'll, I'll add this later. Anyway, so Sam also did, we, we all did research a little bits here and there. Um, we actually had three weeks to do the research on it, and we did it in two days. The, the two days before the podcast. Yeah. So we're, it's guys, real fresh. It's real you fresh. You guys are real special. I did it the night before. Wow. Well, to be fair, when we first decided we were going to do it, I did listen to a podcast on it, which kind of covered the basics. It didn't go into a, a whole lot of detail. Um, and then from there, yeah, the last two days I did most research. Now, Sam, who are it, who who is Banksy? Who is he believed to be? There's actually a couple interesting ideas behind Banksy. One, mm-hmm. Peter Dinklage. Two, Robert De Niro. Three, that short guy that plays as the Penguin in Batman uh, when George Clooney was Batman. All possible people. Crap, now I can't think of his name. 
I want to say Robert De Niro, but that's not right. <laughs> that's definitely not it. Uh, Four, it could be Banksy. Wait. Oh, crap. What? Seven. Didn't even think of that. Ian McKellen. <laughs> Gandalf's just casting spells and like painting walls. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> mm, that'd be a good one. Um, so Johnny Depp. Here's a list of possible suspects, as they say. Um, top of the list that I saw. Not necessarily top of the list. Wait, Did- hold on. Will I have to load my gun and keep it under my pillow at night if you name off this this list of uh, possible sus like people? I can either confirm nor deny. Okay, go ahead and read it. Awesome. Okay, uh, I've never heard of this band, but there's a band called Massive Attack. Oh yeah. Uh, the lead singer Robert Del Naja um, was suggested to be maybe possibly. Um, also on the list, Thierry Guetta. Guetta can't pronounce his last name. Um, he's a street artist based in Los Angeles, and I kind of doubt it because he's already an established street artist. So, yeah, I unlikely. feel like he would probably just take all that fame and glory. Honestly, I mean, I don't see why he would be like, "Oh yeah, I'm a street artist by day, but now I'm a street artist by night." No. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, in other words, I don't sleep. Yeah, I don't sleep. You know. And I'm also from Los Angeles, but I'm from Los Angeles, but you know, I, I had my roots up in Brooklyn. You see, and I was up there with the gangster. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Anyways, the power has gone to my head. It has. Um, the other suggestion was a fellow named Robin Banks, and uh, the reason why they suggested him was that. In 2013, um, a teen on a subway helped a guy pick up some paints that he spilled. And in return, he was given an artwork, a piece of Banksy's artwork, signed by Banksy, and was told by the person who gave it to him that it was worth 20,000 pounds, which is roughly, I think, 24,000 U.S. dollars. Um, Holy crap. If anyone wants to spill paint and call me up and give me 20,000 pounds for that, I will gladly pick up paint for 20,000 pounds. Now... The you have to pick it up. It's been spilled. You have to pick it up out of the carpet, every drop of it, and put it back in the can. I will. I will do it. I will suck it out of the carpet with my mouth. <laughs> Get a sham wow. It's faster. $25,000? Yes. Okay. Do you have $25,000 in your bank account right now? No. Okay. There's a lot of other things you'd put in your mouth for $25,000. Just saying. Like, like pennies. Like, like pennies. And corn chips. And corn chips. You're not wrong. If corn chips with salsa, mm-hmm, I put that in my no, mouth. No, just raw, extra oh, salty corn chips. Uncooked. Corn no chip. water. <laughs> you're not even allowed water. It's just like. In fact, you're just eating a okay, stack of Okay, anyways. <laughs> Sorry. Robin, Robert Banks. <laughs> yep. And then, so here's another thought. Maybe Banksy isn't a person, but maybe he's a group of persons. You missed one. Are you, do you have any more? I do. I have one more after okay. this one. Um the so the other suggestion was that because these artworks are so elaborate, maybe there's a team, and there was suggested that there was a team of seven artists, possibly more, led by a blonde woman. Um, I believe that they were caught on videotape at some point, um, and they just thought maybe it was a group of people. And there's been a couple instances where like a moving truck moved into a place, and then like mattresses were set up like boxes and mattresses were set up on either side so there's like pulls up alongside a wall right and then material is put between the end of the truck and the front of the truck to the wall and then uh, something happens people are around you know milling around and then the truck leaves and then there's a banksy artwork so that's happened supposedly and that would take a lot of coordination so even if banksy was one person it's Still a good chance that he's got like a, a team, an entourage. Well, I and just want to say, have you seen those those Facebook videos of people doing spray paint artwork where they take like this the, the cardboard stencils and they mm. make like galaxy photos in less than two minutes? Just saying. Galaxy those photos are always in beautiful. less than two minutes. Yeah, they take pictures of the sky. So <laughs> here is the last the last one that I have. Um criminal profilers actually did some work trying to get um like a demographic built based on where his artwork was shown and what they knew about him and things like that. And what they came up with was a gentleman named Robin Gunningham. Um, now that kind of ties in with the Robin Banks idea, just because um, there's been some references to people calling people who know Banksy calling him Rob. Um, but Robin Gunningham was in 
the specific part of England where Banksy paintings started first popping up in the 90s. And then he was also, I believe, um, when he came to America, there was also evidence that Robin Gunningham came around the same time. And there's just a lot of corroborative evidence that suggests, based on this criminal profile, that it's this guy. So, unfortunately, this gentleman, um, from everything that I saw, he's distanced from his friends and family. He doesn't really talk with them, so there's no way to be like, hey, family members, you want to give up Banksy? And also, a lot of the street artists who personally know Banksy, they're very tight-lipped. Everybody's pretty tight-lipped. So he chooses his friends well, and it's a community. Of, Unlike me. Yeah. Yeah. He's, it's, a, it's a community. It's like a skater community or like any of those other kind of underground cult following type groups where they're just, they have a tight knit group. And if there's a secret in that group, their lips are sealed. So, well, and that is actually something interesting that I came across in my research. There's actually a guy that's like, he works for the police over there in Bristol and he's like the head of the investigation for like finding out who he is because a lot of the artwork that, that Banksy does um, is actually illegal because it is, you know, graffiti. It's public property or yeah, private, public property, even private property. Yeah. So a lot of, he, he's the head of like investigation. He's been like trying to figure out who Banksy is for a long time now. And I was just thinking about this um, as I was reading it and I was like, holy crap. Like, a lot of his, um, a, a lot of what like plays into him wanting to stay secret. Like, think about it this way: like, he likes to elude the police. Like, he likes to stay away from the police. He likes the idea of it being mysterious, and like, it's kind of like a, like I almost related him, and not quite in the same sense, but in the same sense as Jack the Ripper, where it was just like normal night, do 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 do. Next morning, boom, there's. Like, a, a, a crime happened in the night, but it's just artwork. And the police are like, who did this? You know, kind of a thing. And and then it's one of those things where it, that person, whoever Banksy is, can kind of, like, sit back and kind of have, like, the uh, the satisfaction of, like, being like, oh, I did something terrible. And yet, and people are trying to figure out who did it, but it was me all along. And kind of like one of those, it's just like kind of like... He, at ha, least, bamboozled again. Yeah, it's almost like... It's almost like his personality matches up with like that of a serial killer where it's like <laughs> <laughs> where it's like, "Oh, I did something bad and I want you to know I did something bad, but I don't want you to catch me because I want to keep doing it and I like I, I like the thrill of getting away with it." And so I kind of just wanted to I say I think there's to a Taylor artist, Swift song about this. I don't Anyways. Anyway, um <laughs> but like it's just something I wanted to say to our listeners like, "Hey, if you guys have like that fascination of like getting away from the police, please just do it in a very artful way that involves graffiti because killing people's wrong. I just want to put that out there. Well, did you know he does more than graffiti? No. Yeah. No, I didn't. He does. Banksy roams New York with stuffed animal truck makes a statement around animal rights. And it's a stuffed, it's a truck with stuffed animals sticking out of the side of it, and each animal has their own sound. And there's somebody in the there's somebody in the back of it making the sounds and making loud thumping noises. And um, it's and they he drove it around the meat meat industry. Dis, I can't words, the meat cutting areas of New York. The deli section. No, sure, yeah, the deli the, section. The deli like section the, in New York. Like the butchering Where all the butchering sandwiches area come from. Like... Anyway, it happened back in April 2014, and the reason that... He just made me hungrier, <laughs> honestly. I just was the like... Reason, mm. <laughs> the reason that it is... The reason that people know it's Banksy is an illustrated of the meat truck appeared on Banksy's website. Since then, it has been printed on canvases, t-shirts, and more... To raise awareness about animal rights. I don't care about animal rights. I want my freaking steak. Just saying. And that's a big thing about his artwork is it's really never about just the piece of art. A lot of it is in some way or another socially common social commentary or um, like political commentary. So he's always trying to make a statement about it and even sometimes, like with in the incident with the 
the razor shredder that cut up his uh, his painting, it's like throwing it in the face of the art world. Like, haha, I'm an artist, but you can't buy it for millions and millions of dollars because yeah. you're just it's a um it's a commentary on the bloated art world where like a painting that's just a canvas with blue paint smeared on it is suddenly worth two million dollars. You know? Yeah. Interesting thing about that is like he took that art that that bl- uh, girl with balloon I think that's what he called it yeah um after he shredded it he gave it a new name thus making it a new art piece which was really cool and there was actually some conspiracy theory behind this which I wanted to talk to you guys about which I thought was kind of cool there's a lot of people saying like because if you go to real his quick ins- before we get off topic did you know that after it was shredded it was um theoried to have raised five to seven million dollars more. So it was sold for one point four million dollars, or pound, whatever currency, and it was said that after it shredded, since as that piece, it went up five to seven million. I'd believe that. Anyways, size. Anyway, back to conspiracy uh, theory. Conspiracy theory about that art piece. Um, a lot of people like say, because if you go to his Instagram page and you and you look at the video, because he posted a video shortly after, um, after the painting was shredded. He posted a video of like how he how had this made. plan all along, essentially that as soon as it went up for auction and, and was sold, he was going to shred it. A lot of people were like, they looked at like the the width of the blades. They looked at like, or like, I'm sorry, not the width, but the spacing of the blades and stuff like that. The the alignment of it and was like, it would be impossible to be able to do that. And they looked at like the crinkle of the paper and stuff like that. And they're like, theories is just based on the way how it looks. It shows that it the original painting is actually still inside the frame because the bottom of the paper is all wound up already. It's like crinkled, like, you know, like it had been tightly wound up in there. And then if you look at the, like, and it's actually kind of interesting, but I already disproved it at work today because I saw it while I was doing research at work and working. We're bad people. Somewhat. Um, <laughs> hey, we do work they, they took some dude that he was, oh, no, I drew his na- I wrote his name. I think his name is uh, Steve Bowler. He posted on Instagram short, or on Twitter shortly after the painting was shredded, and he talked about how he drew two red lines from the edges of the painting down, and he showed how the alignment of the paper wasn't matching up which suggests that the original painting is actually rolled up inside the bottom of the frame but if you hmm. like okay so people pull out a piece, i don't care if you're driving doesn't matter what you're doing pull out a piece of paper right now draw a stick figure on that piece of paper okay take something else put it in front of that piece of paper okay so like you're you're covering up just a portion of it so you see the head and then you see the feet now take that that uh piece of paper and you bend it just slightly back, like it were to go through like a little S shape, okay? Notice how, and and you also have to turn the, uh, turn it to an angle at the same angle at which the photo was taken, where he drew the stupid red lines on it, and you can see that it actually, like, moves the way, it it, it makes, it's an optical illusion where it makes it look like it's not aligned properly. And so people that are like, Oh no! It's just rolled up in the bottom of it because the bottom of the painting is all crinkled up. It's like, have you ever I seen? Think, I don't think Banksy cares that much about his art. No, that's <laughs> the thing. But I will say, as a like a little, uh, like it's exactly what Banksy would do, though. True. Where he's like, oh, I shredded the painting. Oh, gotcha! The painting's still fine. Oh, I shredded that somehow after yeah, like, you discovered yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So, but oh no, there's a bomb in there. <laughs> oh no, there's oh, gosh. Oh, yes, great anarchy. I mean, he is an anarch. <laughs> He's kind of got that anarchist, you know, that thread. It, yeah, the vibe. But like, so again, if you look, pull up, pull up the the um. I'll link the I'll put a link in the description for the Instagram. Conspiracy, yeah, the conspiracy theorist. Uh, behind, it. I would say do the conspiracy theory thing because people like that guy is so like dead set on it on the fact that it it's rolled it, up inside. It's it. rolled yeah, up inside yeah. of it. But if you look at it and like seriously, just take a piece of paper, draw a straight line, hold your finger in front of it, and then bend the paper back a little or bit, crinkle it, or you know, well, just like just make it like a little S shape. Like imagine like it goes down over a ledge and then down <laughs> again. 
if you can visualize that with, with your third eye. Um, <laughs> if you can see my hand If you can, if you can see that with your ears, do it. Take, yes, Take please. some DMT and then visualize paper going what over. What is DMT? Uh, hitting a ledge, going down, and down another ledge. It's like a stair stepper, but backwards. That's not what I said. DMT is a uh, psychedelic drug derived from tree bark. And your brain, your quote unquote third eye, you act, your brain actually produces small amounts of DMT. But when you take DMT, of course, it's it's more. Um, now, see. Uh, anyways, the, the I've only heard knows of LSD. a lot about this, and he's also an artist. So I'm gonna say he does it. Yes. Well, actually, if you look up DMT artwork, it's really weird because a lot of people have similar experiences, and so when they look at artists who have specifically tried to illustrate their trips. Uh, on DMT into artwork, they're like, oh yeah, I've, I've seen that because it's all very similar. And it's also an influence for... Um, the Holocaust? No. Um, That's good. N- not at all. That's good. But a lot of uh, like psychedelic rock albums, okay. like album artwork, a lot of times it's influenced or maybe the artists who created the artwork were on DMT. And so it has a lot of psychedelic attributes and psychedelic attributes really come out um from those trips next meme <laughs> where were we at so i was talking about oh um, listening with your ears yes listen with your ears so people. i'll link that those videos in the description blah, 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 blah. so i will articles. link those videos so i will I link those article. articles in the description if Silas sends them to me if he doesn't then you'll have to find them yourself yep probably pretty easy to find it, probably it, it, the, okay so this is actually i literally just was like Banksy stuff, and then it came up. <laughs> <laughs> so just, dear Google, I mean, Banksy stuff. Dear Google. Dear Google. <laughs> okay, so every time, you... <laughs> yeah, new challenge, people. Every time you Google something, you gotta write dear Google because it's a Google. woman and it deserves to be respected as such. Dear Gugele. Okay, what were you gonna say, Sam? Um, I was just gonna say it kind of bothers me that the entire painting wasn't shredded because it stops but, like a few inches. Okay, above. so it's a new art piece. Something about that though. According to one video I watched, <laughs> all the other tests with the other frames, it shredded it completely. So that was a malfunction. So it was maybe a malfunction. Uh, or it was on purpose. It could have been on purpose. And it, I mean, with Banksy, you never know. It's making yeah, a exactly. statement, and it's also been said like, this is one of those like high art. Like someone thought about it way too long, and they're like, because he shredded the art at an art thing. He was making a commentary on the bloated, inflated prices of artwork in the art industry. But, but the he, irony and, of it is he actually made his art more artful and then made it more expensive. No, yeah, he single-handedly no, he was, made it worth more by was, doing that. Because now when you see that painting, you don't only see the like the artistic... <laughs> I get yeah, it. You I'm just going to bulldoze artist. over him for I, was, uh, I was on a bit, and I get interrupted by both James and Silas doing the same, like, mocking voice that I was doing. <laughs> and then, like... The funny know, thing is, I was just talking normal, man. <laughs> but you're not even saying what I was getting at. And so it's Anyways, just, go, Sam. Uh, yeah. Were you doing team. Here oh. you go. No, it's fine. I'll give <laughs> it off to you, man. <laughs> but no, uh, they were just saying, like, because he did this thing, he's actually making the entire art auction his art piece oh, like yeah. he, i heard like, that too. like he's making the whole event his commentary and like his artwork I'm like i guess that's kind of a thing okay i guess so i mean i think you probably have to be high on what was a dm dm dmt dmt or lsd <laughs> or lsd no but like he <laughs> but let me explain why those are different go ahead Stab you in the neck. Oh, no, you were next to, oh, I thought you were going to do it. I was going to go on a 10-minute ride about, you know, why DMT is different than I LSD. will stab you in the neck. That would hurt. With my eyes. And be murder. Well, see, Not LSD is eyes. used by the CIA. DMT is used by the hippies that can't afford the LSD. And the LSD, if you get, pu- actually, my next-door neighbor was in Vietnam, and he actually was given pure 100% LSD to stay awake for crazy amounts of hours. And he wouldn't take it, so he would give it to his other buddies. That is insane. Yeah. And then they all came back hippies. This is why we need to have old people on the podcast because we're all young and we were all really boring Christians who didn't do anything exciting. I did some exciting stuff. I went to California last week. You did. I went to California when I was younger than you. (laughs) I have never been to California. I went to a naked beach. Shut up. 
<laughs> That's actually pretty exciting, I will say. Why'd you go to a naked beach? For another podcast to be continued. <laughs> also, another thing that uh, no one really touched on in the videos and articles I looked up is he is affiliated with Waldorf Hotel. Banksy, that is. He is he's okay. affiliated with all these, with a the hotel. And they, it, they have a safety notice. They have uh, a musician's retreat, a new solo show coming January 12th. Actually, it's past now, but you know, it's still on their website. But it's just, it's really interesting. You can actually find it on Google Maps. I looked it up, and you can, if you go to the address, you can find it, and there's good reviews about it. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. And it's in Bethlehem, Palestine. Do you cool. Know, no. Do you Something, know? So. Sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. Guys. I've talked too much. <clears throat> Something I thought it was kind of interesting, and I, this doesn't go along with like any facts or anything that uh, I did research on, but it was just a thought that while I was doing research, I was like, it's kind of, it'd be kind of cool, like as a shop owner. Because I saw this one photo of a painting that he did where he had – it was the photo – sorry, the painting where it's the guy leaning up against the wall. And he has, like, a dozen roses, but, like, the petals are falling off to the floor, and he looks sad. And it's just, like, on the fr- – like, on, like, the slider, like, protective, like – thing that rolls up i don't know what it's called like the garage door like type thing the anti-theft doors that yeah, sometimes like the, slide down yeah over exactly it's just on that it's like how cool would it be as like a business owner to like you know like you lock up one night you go home and you come back and you have a banksy art piece on your freaking you could take like, that door off and sell it for thousands and that's what people millions, do dude. yeah no but like no, or you could just keep it there, and then you're going to draw more people into your business by yeah. just leaving it there. Like, how cool would it be to be targeted by Banksy? Like, it's a positive thing to be targeted by Banksy because you only gain benefits from it. Yeah. And you have a freaking cool art piece to show from it. Yep. Like, how cool is that? What's crazy, though, is that there there's incidents where people either didn't want it. Like, people are like, oh, Banksy, I don't want this here. And so they just... They paint over it, mm-hmm. or there's been instances where, like, I think one shop owner, one shop, uh, I think it was a woman, she owned the shop, and she wakes up one day, it's painted, and then she paints over it, not knowing that it's a Banksy artwork, and then when people found out about it, she was, like, halfway done painting it or whatever. They're like, that's a Banksy, and I think that, like, she got into some sort of legal battle because once she found out it was a Banksy and that it was worth money, like... People were trying to like take it from her, basically, and she was like, "No, that's actually mine." How do you take a brick wall from somebody? They do though. They what? do. They'll auction yeah, they, off they, like they, a brick wall. They will auction off a brick wall and then say, "All right, you gave us. I don't know. Who, you, you gave us a million dollars. Oh my gosh, how to let's do it. go to Bristol, guys. Podca- podcast trip to Bristol. We're just gonna find random pieces of artwork. We're gonna take those velvet ropes, put it around it, and we're gonna auction off for millions and we're call it say, a Banksy. We're gonna call it a Banksy." Sam, I'm going to have you paint something. James, Pretty sure. You're going to announce to people, and I'll just stand next to it and look nice. Pretty sure that's called fraud, and it's illegal. Not if you don't know about it. Not if you don't I didn't know ever, about it. I didn't it. even hear what you said. What did you say? I don't say? know what we're I talking didn't hear about. It. You know what? Uh, what is it? Um, Never. It, pleading, pleading the fifth? Where you, pleading the fifth. Pleading ignorance? I don't know. Uh, one of those things? Just saying. It's not the truth. Pleading um, the fifth ignorance. And you know what? If Banksy was to come out at us and get mad at us, you know, he can come show his face. I don't really want him to get mad. I just want him to paint something on my house. Yeah, I would actually love it if he would just do that. And I wouldn't care beyond, like, value or anything. It'd just be cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, again, that that's what I was saying, like, as a shop owner. Like, if, if, I wa- if I, like, came to my shop in the morning and, like, just say I have, like, a small bakery... I just make simple loaves of bread because you are a I guess I talked to Sterling too much and he just wants loaves. me to make bread. And so I make bread because it's something Sterling influenced me to do. Or like I moved to have Germany you made bread and before? I make shoes. Uh, my mom does and I think it would probably be easy, but I have never done it. So I don't know. But like I just walk into my bankery. Bankery? Bankery. <laughs> <laughs> and Banksy has no, that's what you re- bread. That's All what you of a sudden, rename it. You rename the bankery. it the Banksy. <laughs> Thanks, Gree. Thanks, yes, Gree. guys. That's oh, right. Oh, that's good. My loaves went from a dollar thirty uh, a loaf to five dollars a loaf simply because you of are that thinking painting. way too small. Ten bucks, bro. No, you got to start small because then you got to match supply and demand. And you, if you already have inflated, if you already have inflated prices, then you can like you got to start small and you'll just go up from there. Like it's okay. 
Think about the long run. Don't think about the immediate. Think about the long run, okay? And you still want to attract business. People will start eating my bread and be like, oh, this tastes like crap, but they'll still be willing to pay $5 for it. Then when it goes up $1.30 again, and it's $6.30 for a loaf, boom, I'm making some more money. I hate you because you made something in dollar six dollar thirty. Yeah, and but five, it's because that's easy to buy. I can't worry. You think, oh, it's only a dollar thirty more. Boom. Playing off your psychology, man. And they're making money off of it. And you know what? Actually, you shouldn't. You if you if always if play it, off of human psychology. No, if you want to play off human psychology, then you make it six ninety nine. No, 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 no. What's up with this thirty cents? A dollar thirty more. The three it has significant value to me. Okay. Silas is talking right out of his left toenail. Nope. You know what really Nikolai irritates Tesla me? Only ever got like like when he got his apartment. Stupid prices. He was it was. Easily divisible by threes, okay? Okay, There's, real quick, why Why are... There it, is magic in the three. I don't know what it is. Okay, now Silas is going on a meaningless rant about something that really doesn't matter. No, it does matter because freaking Tesla has better technology <laughs> than anything in this room. <laughs> Somehow okay, I'm convinced... doesn't matter if Nikolai Tesla fell in love with a pigeon and the pigeon died and Did he you know died. supposedly he died a virgin? That's probably true because all he cared about was that freaking pigeon. I am convinced by Silas' argument right now, right here and now. Boom. See, dollar thirty. I already got one customer. But here's what happens. Banksy comes to my cobbler shop where I make shoes. <laughs> That's what I true. Would do, That's what actually happened. To <laughs> he increases the price by $10.30. And, and, and then I print off, and 30 cents. I print off the painting <laughs> into a little square circle of uh, canvas. <laughs> <laughs> and you put it, you put it in the sole of the shoe. No, I was gonna make it like the all star, like the converse all star symbol. You know? Oh, perfect! Yeah, that's I'd better. Have Look that this guy. on the side of my shoes, and I'd call them Banksy shoes. Banksy shoes. I think you would probably run into some legal ramifications with that, but that's okay. Or I could call them Shanksies. <laughs> There you go. That works. And everybody in prison would buy them. Or Yeezys. Yes, because, because they that's come the with... only place where you can produce them right. when you're in prison for fraud. <laughs> <laughs> because they have small shivs in the bottom of them that you can well, slip out real easy. Yeah, they Here's... have like a convenient and you can little, shake people. Little, little spring button you press and it like shoots the a shiv out and you catch it in your hand. And stab, stab, stab. And then Ricardo's dead. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you're automatically the prison boss. So bonuses. Here's, I'm only hearing that's how positive mafia things. Works. That's, that's exactly how it works. That's exactly how the mafia works. Though with there in Brooklyn, you know, you got the little shank. Well, clearly go. neither of you got my joke. You think you think no. Richard? I don't watch Family down, Guy, so I don't know. You think it's him a down PewDiePie to the joke. Oh, okay. You take him down to the docks. You stick him with a shiv. You go six feet under. You make him swim with the fishes. You know what? Then the problem's done. Wait, you? Why are you burying the fishes? Wait, you go six feet under and then make them no, swim with the no, fishes? No, he, he's six feet under once you put him with a shiv. You know, you put the shiv up under the rib cage and then he's dead. And, you know, you, you <laughs> clean out your trunk, you burn the car, you put him in the river, the fish eat him. You know, it's called clean. You set your gold on the fire, you, you <laughs> kill your like grandma, that. and then... Can you say something about cannoli? I love him. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I guess that works. <laughs> How about the fettuccine? I guess I wasn't very specific. I'm sorry. You know what? Alfredo's the best thing that ever happened to this world. Except for my mob boss, Linguini. And your mama's cannoli. <laughs> and my mama's cannoli. There you, you know go. What? Got him to say it. <laughs> you know what? My mama makes the best cannoli. She makes it nice and fresh. You know what? After killing somebody, throwing them in the river, the next best thing. Burn your car. <laughs> my, <laughs> my mama's cannoli. <laughs> That's all I can say. My mama's cannoli with some ragoli and some spaghetti. Mm, that's saying, what I like. You're a terrible SoundCloud rapper, but I, I still <laughs> like you as a friend. <laughs> I think you need more face tattoos first. Right, right. Anywho, back to Banksy. Yeah, so back to Banksy. We do. I think we covered it. Well, yeah. Is there anything more? There's one more thing. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this podcast. Is love. My name is James Font, Silas Whitlock, Sam Shoemaker. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and uh, check us out on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. So thanks for joining us. Bye now. Peace out. <laughs>